I recently did a video on the top four longevity foods that can extend your life. However, what can have an even bigger impact than all of those foods combined is what I'm about to go through in this video, and that is sugar. I think you're gonna be amazed at the impact that sugar can have on our bodies and the incredible benefits that you can get short-term and long-term when you cut sugar out and make sure you stick to the end to find out how you can more easily cut out sugar without it being a big battle. Let's begin. Hello and uh, welcome back to the channel. My name is Stephen, if you haven't met me already, and we're gonna be talking about sugar. This is one of the most important topics I think we need to be talking about at the moment because unfortunately we live in a world where sugar is just everywhere. It's added in things you wouldn't necessarily expect it to be added to and is having such a drastic impact on our health. And I think so many of the impacts that it's having we're not actually fully aware of. So I hope that in this video that I don't scare you, but just motivate you to make some changes in regards to reducing or ideally cutting out the added sugar in particular in your diet, because I believe it's gonna have a massive impact on your health short term and long term. Now, of course, before I go through this, your body absolutely needs sugar. And in fact, with diabetic patients, the risk really is that the sugar gets too low because if the sugar gets too low, that person can very, very quickly go into a coma and die. Whereas the body is actually much better at dealing with too much sugar in your blood for longer periods of time. And some people can go quite a long period of time without even um, knowing that they have too much sugar in their blood and that they're actually diabetic. Now, there are massive issues when you have too much sugar in your blood. And that's what I'm gonna go through because this is really gonna deteriorate your body um, over a longer period of time, but will also eventually lead to death. But because your body needs sugar so badly, it has got mechanisms to create its own sugar. And it does this through some of the macronutrients that you take in, such as protein and fat. And so for this reason, our bodies don't actually need additional sugar, but it does very, very well with the sugar that it can create itself, provided that you're getting good quality and enough protein and fat in your diet. And so we really don't need to be adding extra sugar into our diets. And here is how this is gonna impact your health for the negative. The first thing I wanna go through is something that we call glycation. And this has been referred to as an aging reaction, but it's simply just the binding of sugar to uh, something like a protein. So in the blood, this is gonna be where sugar binds to the blood cell, or really more specifically is the hemoglobin in your blood cell, which is responsible for carrying around oxygen around your body. This binding is a problem because it starts to deform that blood cell and makes it less effective. It does a few things to that blood cell. One of them is to make it more stiff and stickier and therefore more likely to clot. And this actually leads a person to be more likely to uh, develop things like cardiovascular disease so strokes and heart attacks, but it can also lead to the classic triad of symptoms that diabetic patients will develop if they don't control their blood sugars, and that is issues with their eyes, with their kidneys, and with their nerves. And one of the reasons is if you've got blood that is more likely to clot, it's more likely to clot in the smaller arteries that uh, lead to certain organs. And for diabetics, it tends to be the eyes, the kidneys, and the nerves. So this tends to develop symptoms like tingling or numbness. It's especially it will start in the more distal areas of your body. So your feet and your toe, just because they're further away from your heart. This is why diabetics tend to have numbness in their feet or just start to develop the inability to be able to feel their feet. And this can lead to all sorts of issues. That is also why diabetics can start to 
and get some vision and kidney issues. Now, these things can even just start to develop even before you get to the point of being diabetic. And this is therefore a big reason why we want to reduce our sugars because it's essentially going to be damaging our blood and that will then lead over time to damaging different organs in our body. Now, we can actually measure this and this is a common test that is done to diagnose diabetics and it's called an A1C test. This basically measures the percentage of your blood cells that have sugar bound to it. And the figure that they tend to look for is 5.7%. If you're below that, you're termed normal and above 6.5%, you're termed diabetic. So we want to keep these percentages as low as possible. Now, another impact that too much sugar in the blood can have if you are getting this binding of sugar to the blood cells and this is causing a deformation of that blood cell, one of the primary jobs of the hemoglobin in that blood cell is to carry around oxygen. If it's not able to do this very well, you're actually gonna get less oxygen effectively circulating your body, which can lead to anemia and tiredness. When we think of anemia and tiredness, we tend to jump to iron and B12 deficiencies. And although they can also to be relatively common too much sugar can also be another reason why you may be feeling tired but there is another reason why you may be feeling tired and that is high glucose variability this is another impact that sugar can have and this will lead to high spikes followed by a low spike and the reason why we get the low spike is because when a lot of sugar floods the blood the body has to respond by releasing a hormone called insulin to take that sugar and start to store it. It has to do this because too much sugar in the blood at one time will cause the issues that I already went through. So it tries to keep it at bay. However, if you abuse the system and you cause a massive spike, the body often ends up overcompensating, which then creates too little sugar in the blood and so therefore you end up with these high spikes and low dips and then you get this high glucose variability. High glucose variability has been associated with an increase in mortality and issues with cardiovascular system as well as making it more likely of developing things like cancer as well as diabetes. So high glucose variability has been associated with poorer health and so one of the best things you can do for your health is to keep your glucose variability low and to keep a more consistent amount of sugar in your blood so you're not abusing the system. In fact, interestingly, one of the most effective ways that you can actually lose weight is reducing the amount of insulin you force your body to release. The reason why is because the job of insulin is to take that sugar out of your blood and store it and it stores it in the form of fat. Once this happens, then you have a low amount of sugar again in your blood and that is what can lead you to then feel hungry again. So if you're somebody that gets hungry so often in the day and you have to eat multiple times a day, look out what you're eating because a lot of the times it can be because you're eating high sugar and not very much fiber, fat or protein that give you that satiety. And another reason why it's important to get especially the fat fat and the protein, it's because as I mentioned at the beginning, your body can create its own sugar through breaking down fat and protein. Why this is better than taking in sugar yourself is that this process of breaking down that fat and protein takes time and therefore it can't give you a high blood sugar spike if you have a lot of protein and fat. And what it ends up doing is giving a more of a consistent and steady amount of sugar and therefore it doesn't cause a high spike of insulin. This is fantastic if you wanna lose weight. It's also fantastic if you want to maintain a steady energy across the day, because these highs and lows of, of blood sugar will lead to a roller coaster of, of energy. So how can this affect aging specifically? And just before I go through this, if you're not yet subscribed to this channel, please can I invite you to do so if you enjoy this type of content. It also helps me to make better and more of this type of content. Thank you so much. In regards to aging then, one of the ways it is specifically affected is through the process that I call glycation. And the issue with too much glycation, too much binding of sugar to proteins is it starts to deform it and literally starts to damage parts of your body. And so it can cause your body to deteriorate faster. It's also been linked with an increase 
or mortality. But also if you think about some of the biggest killers in the world, and if you just go in the top two, which is pretty much gonna be cardiovascular disease and cancer, lifestyle is a massive component of these things and we can we can affect these two diseases massively with lifestyle, which is why I think it's, it's massively increased over the last few decades is because our lifestyle tends to be worse, is because our food tends to be worse. But I think number one is the amount of sugar that we're taking in with the lack of fiber, fat and protein. So if we are increasing our risk of those diseases, then it's going to uh, give us a less of a life expectancy. Now, when it comes to cancer, the tumors literally feed on sugar. And this is why many people have managed to effectively reduce or shrink their tumors simply by fasting. Now, of course, they didn't just do fasting, but there has been massive improvements in people with cancer and getting over cancer, even cancers that they uh, were given a very good prognosis through uh, extreme fasting, they, were, they managed to actually reduce this. So, and it's mainly just because you're reducing the amount of sugar that you're feeding the, the tumor. So it, ha it has a massive impact. Now, if you're somebody that wants to look younger and not look old, sugar is, is one of the most effective ways that you can do that. And the reason why it, it is, is, again, it comes down to glycation. The sugar doesn't just affect the blood, but it can also affect some of the proteins in your skin and effectively make your skin less elastic so it can make it more saggy and more wrinkly just simply by having too much sugar so one of the best things you can do for your skin is to reduce the amount of sugar that you you take in and yes some of the lotions and potions that you may put on your skin can help but i think when it comes to diet this is, can actually be more effective and number one will be reducing the amount of sugar that you take in so how can we avoid sugar unfortunately sugar is everywhere and so i think the first thing you've got to do is that any food that you buy in the supermarket that you check the ingredients uh, because you you will be surprised in the types of food that you can find added sugar in one of them that always baffles my mind is bread and so try and find bread in the supermarket without added sugar it's actually a quite a difficult task so get in the habit of checking the ingredients of stuff that you buy but what's even better than that is to buy stuff that don't contain ingredients so more natural products like fruit and veg and meat and fish and those types of uh, more natural uh, foods if you have more of those and less of the uh, processed foods in the supermarkets you're going to be ahead of the game and actually ahead of the most people because the majority of our population these days have the majority of their food ultra processed so we really really want to avoid that now don't forget carbs carbohydrates will very quickly turn into sugar so it's, it's better to consume carbs than it is to consume sugar however particularly when they are refined carbs so like white rice and pasta these things are gonna turn into sugar very quickly. And in fact, uh, some of these refined carbs like white rice, uh, as well as white bread, are very, very close to sugar in regards to how much it spikes your blood sugar. So ideally you want to, number one, keep sugar low, but you also want to keep your refined carbs and generally your, your carbs low as well. Also don't forget that a lot of drinks will contain a lot of sugar one of the big ones which we often consider healthy is orange juice the problem with orange juice is that we've taken away all the fibrous parts of the orange and turned it into a liquid which is basically just pure sugar and yes it's high in vitamin c but i think the high amount of sugar is basically just going to outweigh any of the benefits that you're really going to get from the vitamins in that orange juice so you really got to treat orange juice as a treat and it's really not a health drink at all. The amount of sugar in there is not that far off a soda. And in fact, a soda can be better to consume because at least you're not thinking it's healthy and we tend to have that in a bit more of a moderation. Now, one of the things, one hack that you can use that if you still want to have some sugar, you want to have a dessert or whatever it may be, is to have it after you've eaten your meal, after you've eaten a good amount of fat, protein and fiber. And the reason why is because these foods will literally slow down the ability of that sugar to get into your blood. One of the worst things that you can do is eat sugar on an empty stomach. That will spike your blood sugar as high as anything. That will cause a massive spike of insulin and then go through that process that basically I explained earlier. So just have sugar 
at the end of a meal and it will make a big difference if you still want to have some sugar and really avoid snacking across the day, particularly with sugary snacks. Now I have recently written and a very, very short ebook. It's a downloadable PDF that you can get in the description of this video where I go through the five critical and foundational rules for weight loss, but also overall health and cutting out sugar is one of them. But I go for, through four others that I think you're going to find very, very helpful. So go and download that if you're interested. It's completely free. And in regards to the next video, if you are somebody that's struggling to cut out sugar, then I highly recommend that you, you check out my video that I did recently on how you can kill this addiction and make this process a lot easier. And just to give you a, um, a sneak peek into this video, one of the things that I already talked about is increasing your fat, protein and fiber. But there are other things I go through and you can check that video out that'll pop up in just a sec, just here. The other video you may want to check out is the one I mentioned at the very beginning is the four longevity foods that will help to extend your life, really help to improve your health. So you might find that interesting. You can check that out here. Just before they come on though, don't forget that you can get 10% off a Vivo Barefoot minimalist shoes that I wear every single day. You can get 10 pound off your first bag of organic, super healthy coffee. You can get 10% off Athenase, a uh, superfood specifically formulated for men and 15% fussy and natural deodorant that doesn't contain any of the harmful chemicals. I will see you on one of those videos or on my next one. So don't forget to subscribe. See you next time.